I'm feeling like a snappy dresser today. My coffee cup matches my shirt, as it should. <laughs> Pastor Bob's Coffee Break, coming up next. Hello, I'm Scott. I'm Winkle Bell. <laughs> Do the brew switcheroo. Tired of your old brew? Make you want to spew? Break through with a new cool brew. Spew your old brew and switcheroo. Look at you. Headbangers Brew. Thank you, Scott and Tammy. And thank you, those of you that have been purchasing Headbangers Brew. As you know, our coffee and all of our stuff, the money goes to feed the homeless and we appreciate you being involved. One more thing before we start that I want to ask you to do. We are having a lot of trouble with social media. We have, uh, only one more strike against us on Facebook and we're out. And uh, basically our only problem there is that they call the Christian um, videos and Christian content hate speech many times. And there's so many things that we've been knocked down for. The algorithms hardly carry us anymore on Facebook and YouTube. And so, um, so we're going to a third place just to be safe. And I'd love for you to follow us to rumble. And, uh, here is where you can go. Rumble.com slash Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. And you'll find me there. And please subscribe. And, uh, I've been posting there for months. And you'll find all of our content there as well. Here's the question for today. Dear Pastor Bob, I became a Christian 17 years ago. At first, I was on fire and excited about it. But through the years, I've lost that feeling and the faith that I once had. My friend told me that I shouldn't judge my faith by feelings because it's a decision, not a feeling. I'm confused. Well, I'm a little confused by that, too. <laughs> I, I think your faith is also a feeling, and I think it has to be. And let's dig right into some scripture. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's some really good ones. And the first one is found in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. And he says, Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard for out of it flow the springs of life. So your heart. Now the Bible tells you to guard your mind as well in other places, but here it's telling us with all vigilance to guard your heart. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above everything else that you guard. Why? because from it flow the springs of life. You already realize that this is something you feel. And you know, it's funny when the Bible begins to tell us how the Holy Spirit works through us, again, from the inside out, and again, the scripture on spiritual fruit, the gifts of the Spirit, it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. All of those things, by the way, that are feelings. So you can't separate it. Now, Christianity is a decision that we make. But it is also a feeling because God begins to work in our hearts and you feel it. There's a change going on. I become a new creation in Christ. That's a feeling. And uh, I think this is kind of a dangerous thing. But it says, guard 
those things with all vigilance. Now, let's go on to Psalm chapter 40. Psalm chapter 40, we're going to look at verse 3. And David is kind of stuck here. And he says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. And he put, uh, uh, and gave me a firm place to stand. And right away, he says in verse 3, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to my God. Many will see and fear, revere and worship, and put their trust and confidence and their reliance in the Lord as a result. As a result of what? As a result of what is going on with him, as a result of God rescuing him, and this new song that he has. <laughs> well, you can see that it's an emotional thing. So what about the new song? And that's kind of getting back to our question for today. He says, I became a Christian 17 years ago. And by the way, I, I get a lot of these questions almost every day. I used to be this and now I'm this. I used to be on fire for the Lord, and now I don't know what happened. You know, I think we all start out as baby Christians. And we start out walking. And, you know, this is an interesting thing. When you're, when you're a baby Christian, before you can even walk, God takes care of you as a baby. And he really does. You know, it would be silly to bring a baby home from the hospital, set the baby on, on a chair in the living room and say, welcome to our home. The bathroom is down the hall and to the left and the refrigerator is stocked. The baby would die. Baby can't take care of itself. It'll be several years before that can happen. But then there's this time also when the baby begins to walk, 10, 11, 12 months, usually somewhere in there. And the baby starts to walk and he's already been exercising his legs, but he's holding on to things. And then he begins to walk without holding on to anything. And uh, usually mom is on one side and dad is on the other side going, come on, you can do it, you can do it. And the first thing that happens is usually the baby starts to walk and falls. Very few times isn't able to walk too far without falling, especially the first time. But that first time is interesting for a baby. The baby looks up, looks at the parents and says, why did you let me fall? You've been taking such good care of me. You've been holding me. You've been, you've been making sure that I don't fall. You've been, you know, my trusted strength. Now what happened? I fell. And he's not so sure he wants to try it again, but he does. He may fall a few more times. And after a while, he realizes that he's got to do it on his own, and he does. But folks, this is what we do in our faith. At the very beginning, there are different kinds of feelings. We're babies in Christ. And the Bible says, now that you've learned how to walk, learn how to eat meat and not just milk of the word. In other words, learn to walk on your own. I'm right there. I'm going to help you. But you need to take the initiative and begin to walk. And we look up and we say, Lord, why did you let go? And he said, I didn't let go. I just want you to walk. I've given you all the tools to do it. You're ready. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you ever. But folks, 
we go through changes in our Christian lives. We go through maturity in our Christian lives. And I'm so glad that we do. I'm so glad we don't stay babies, that God begins to give us our spiritual legs. And as a result, we begin to walk. What a wonderful thing. And this is where the problem comes to. I've lost what I had. No, you haven't. You're just learning how to walk. Get back in the race. Paul said you were running a good race. Who cut in on you? Nobody did. Get back and get back in the race. There's nothing in front of you. The, the track is level. There's nothing in the road. There's nothing that stops you except, you know, all the stuff on both sides of the road that try to get your attention, but that road is straight, it's level, and it's unencumbered. Run, <laughs> run. So folks, I just wanna say, those of you that are kind of sitting on the sideline, you're saying, I once had this and now I don't, get back in the race, get back in the race. God's still there. He hasn't left you, but he wants you to walk. And he's given you all the tools that you need to do it, but he wants you to be mature. So get back up and start running. Well, folks, don't forget you are blessed. So go and be a blessing. Subscribe to our newsletter at SanctuaryInternational.com.